Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church. Wonderful turnout given our weather. It's wonderful to see you today. Welcome to the house of the Lord. A few quick announcements. First of all, our office is closed tomorrow in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. So please note that. In addition, our quilters will not be meeting until next week. So there is no quilting class tomorrow. They will begin back next Monday. Shelley Hires Bible Study starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. And also, if you're a trustee, please note that we have our first meeting of this new year on Tuesday at 7. Are there any other announcements or clarifications that you would like to make today? Anyone else? I know that we're in a season of flu, so I'm going to ask you to greet, but if you just want to pat on the back or just bow, that's, that's okay. So would you stand and turn to someone and say hello? Jesus, 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Where he find printed in your bulletin the call to worship. We are called to follow Jesus. But following, following Jesus, Jesus isn't easy. No, it will demand our dedication and our energy. It will, it will change our whole lives. Come, all of you, come and learn of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we come seeking your wisdom and your eyes. And if you will remain standing and turn in the hymnal to page number 577, our morning hymn is God of Grace and God of Glory.
And if our children will come for children's message. Good morning. <laughs> this month in Children's Church, we're learning a lot about working together, and we're learning about the life of Jesus. And sometimes when we have to work with other people, it can be a lot of fun, and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. Sometimes it's hard to get along, and we all experience that, no matter how old we are. And sometimes we have to ask people for help when we're working on a project by ourselves. And sometimes that's hard to do. That's hard for me to do. And sometimes you might be working on something and God might be the only one that can help you. And God is always there for you. So anytime that you need help, you can pray to God. And he'll help you. Sometimes it's hard to recognize, but he'll help you. And we have these Bibles here, and Miss Betty Langer and her husband bought them. And we've given a couple of them out over the last two weeks. But you can also use your Bibles for help. If you're having a hard time or if you just don't know what to do, sometimes you can turn in your Bible and there might be a story or a passage or some words from Jesus that will help you too. So... You can all take one home. This one's for Ellie. And Ellie. And let's see. One for Ellie. One for Ellie. Okay, is that everybody? Very good. So those are yours to keep, and you can use them and learn with them, and you can bring them to you on Sundays, and we'll help you learn how to use them. So if you'll bow your heads, please. Dear God, thank you that you will always help us, and help us to learn more about Jesus. Amen. And we'll go to children's church together. It's really a sacred thing to offer the Word of God to someone, especially to children. So we once again thank the Lingers for their wonderful gift and for the opportunity to share that with our children. I'll share with you several prayer updates and some announcements as well. First, we want to lift up Gail Poe, who had some surgery this past week. She is recovering and doing well. And I want to thank Susan for standing in and doing a fine job for Gail this week. Also, we want to lift up Susan's dad, Jim. He is still in the hospital. I believe that today is day 12. 
The problem right now is that his heart keeps spiking in heart rate, and because of that, they can't release him to go on to ERCC for rehab. And he desperately needs to have the rehab. He's definitely lost some strength and mobility while being sick. So we're just praying that his heart situation can be under control. If you'll add him to your list of prayers, we sure appreciate that. And thanks for your prayers for myself and for Rhonda, really for the whole staff. Um, if you've tried to reach us at the office the last two weeks, you probably didn't get through. Rhonda has been extremely sick. She went from bronchitis into the flu, back into bronchitis. And I got the sinus infection bronchitis in there as well. And I think even Angie, our custodian, has, has been sick. Carrie is the healthiest, and she's been taking the brunt of ministry for the last week or two. But we do really thank you for your prayers. That has made such a great difference. I understand that there is somewhat of a flu epidemic, and we want to pray about that and ask the Lord to bring relief. We also want to remember the folks who have been through the terrible mudslides out in California, devastation and loss of life. We really feel their hurt, and we want to lift them up in prayer today. It's my pleasure to announce our grand champion for our fantasy football league this past year here at First Church. And the winner is Miss Jenny Pippen. Congratulations. She destroyed me in the finals, by the way. I had this perfect plan and it's come undone. Now I've got to redo all my planning for fantasy football. But it, it really was a great year of fellowship. And we want to invite others to join us next year. We'll give you more information in a few months after we get through the winter and all. But congratulations to Jenny on a well-played season. Any other announcements that you would like to share, joys or concerns today? I have one. Yes. Um, I've been given the joy of dancing, so I'm giving a free community class at the Y. Uh, this Thursday, 6.30 to 8 p.m. So for a beginner, I would step dancing. Any age is welcome. It's low impact. So if you'd like to move and just try something new, please come. Wow. Uh, this Thursday at? At the YMCA. At the Y at 6 o'clock, did you say? 6.30. 6.30. And that's called Irish step dancing? Yep. And if you're 52 and can't hardly get off the ground, you could still come to something? <laughs> okay. I think you'll get motivated. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful news. Thanks for sharing that today. I hope that we have some takers on that. Great. Other announcements or joys or concerns? A two-year-old little boy in critical condition after being hit by a drunk driver, correct? We lift him up in our prayers. He is at Ruby. They do not think there's brain damage, but good. Still critical. Okay. We lift him up in our prayers today. Thank you for sharing that today. Any others today? Yes. Thanks for sharing that. Gene Lawrence is on a respirator at Ruby. They do not know what the situation is, what the problem is. We lift her up in prayer today for healing. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. Thank you for that. Our pleasure to host, and it was a good time had by all. Thank you, Nick. Others today that you'd like to mention? Yes. I'm a sister Patricia. I can see, see the doctor more. We're looking at some possible food. Okay, Chris's sister Patricia. McVean will be seeing the doctor tomorrow with the possibility of surgery coming. So we lift up Patricia in our prayers today. Thank you, Chris. Any others today that you would like to share? Oh, yes. Your brother's crawling now. 
Wow! Awesome! Excellent. That made our entire day today. Thank you for that. In a couple months, he'll be walking. Oh, before you go to the beach house. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's always good timing, too. That's... <laughs> Something tells me it won't take a couple months. It'll be very, very soon. <laughs> praise the Lord. Any other praises or concerns today? I invite you to bow your heads and let us go to God together. Precious Heavenly Father, we bow before you, acknowledging your presence in this place. We are full of gratitude for the ability to get out even during some difficult weather. And maybe for others, just a difficult challenge in the first place because of health or situation. So we, we are grateful for this opportunity. And you remind us today that Gratitude is a result of a humble life. So help us, Lord, to be grateful every day, to give thanks in all situations for the many blessings that you pour out upon us. And may we be found, like Christ, humble in heart. We lift up those that we have mentioned today. Some situations are very pressing. And we add to those public acknowledgments the many other unspokens as we pause for a moment. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayers. Teach us, Lord, the art of emptying ourselves and fill us with your presence so that we can be true servants. Servants, first of all, in our families. Servants at work and at school. Servants on the team, servants in church, Lord, through your grace, help others see Christ at work in us. In many times and places, it's hard to put on a smile. Teach us to trust you through the thick and the thin. Give us a calm assurance. And may the order of the day for us this year be your heavenly peace that passes understanding. Not the kind of peace the world gives, but a spiritual peace, a presence of Christ. So, Lord, help us to walk a little taller, a little more confident, because you have promised to always be with us. And where you are, there is always peace. So give us that focus, the spiritual focus of your presence today and every day. For we pray this prayer in Christ's blessed name, who taught his disciples of every age to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. I have been blessed recently to receive a number of letters from the Tigard Valley Regional Jail from inmates thanking us for the Hershey bars. I want to read a short one today just before we go to our offering time. This one is brief, but it really catches the spirit. To the Thoughtful Church, 112517. I'm an inmate here at Tigert Valley Regional Jail, and I would like to say thank you to all those involved in the donation of the Hershey bars so all of us incarcerated could have a brighter Christmas. Here's the part that really got me. It means a lot to us to have someone thinking about us from the outside. For many of us do not have close family or friends. Thank you for your thoughts and your prayers. Merry Christmas. Like the director told me, you never know what a Hershey bar might do in a prison. You never know when folks know that a church is involved, how that might be a blessing in return. We praise God because the Hershey bars as our offering are acts of faith and we trust the Lord as we give. Thank you. 
Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. And because of that, we give a little bit back to you. In service, in financial ability, through listening, through the gift of presence. And we thank you for the opportunity. In Christ's name, amen. Please remain standing. You'll need to turn to your little hymnal for our next song, The Faith We Sing, page 2223. <laughs> chosen a different scripture passage other than the one printed in your bulletin. I'm going to be reading from Mark chapter 1 instead. Mark 1 verses 16 through 20. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God, and to that we always say, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I am in the debt of Rob Bell, who did a lot of the background work for this message today. He helps us understand a little bit more why the disciples were so eager to follow Jesus. The Jews of Jesus' day took education very seriously. At the age of six, they would send their children off to synagogue. And during their time between the ages of six and ten, 
they would memorize the entire Torah. The Torah is what we know as the first five books of the Old Testament. You know them, correct? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. (coughs) The word Torah simply means instruction or teaching or perhaps the way. So when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the Torah took on greater meaning. Now in Jesus' day, that first level of teaching was simply called Beit Sufar. And if the students were good enough, if they were the best of those students present, they would get to go on to Beit Midrash. Now, if you weren't quite good enough to make the cut, you were sent home to apprentice with your father to learn the family business or to learn how to run the house with mom. That's the way that it was done. But in Beit Midrash, they took it a step further. They would, over the course of the next four or five years, memorize the entire Hebrew Bible, which is our Old Testament. Can you imagine knowing every single verse of every single book in the entire Old Testament? And if you were really good, if you were the best of the best, then you were invited onto Beit Talmud. And in Beit Talmud, you applied to a rabbi to be his disciple. Now that rabbi would grill you and challenge you and ask you all kinds of questions based not only on the entire Old Testament, but also on the rabbinic interpretation of Scripture. And every rabbi had their own take on Scripture. As a matter of fact, it was called the rabbi's yoke. Remember when Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will have rest for your soul. The rabbi grilled and drilled their student to see if they might just have what it takes to spread the rabbi's yoke. Was the kid good enough? And if he was, that teenager about the age of 15 would give up everything. Home, synagogue, family, apprenticeship, and follow that rabbi so that they could become just like that rabbi. This kind of puts Jesus' calling of the disciples in a new light. Imagine this, Jesus at the age of 30, which was the traditional time that rabbis began to teach, showed up with these disciples following him and they were doing their best to try to keep up. And this guy, this Jesus, was energetic, and he was charismatic, and he was popular, and he was incredible, and people just hung on every word that came out of his mouth. And those disciples just scurried along, trying to be like their rabbi. And whatever that rabbi happened to step in on the way, whatever it might be on the road, would become caked on him, but it would also fly up after him, and whatever he was walking in would be on his disciples as well. And some of the wise men of that day used to say, may you be covered in the dust of your rabbi as you tried to keep up and be like him. Now, why would those disciples so quickly say yes when Jesus called them because the rabbi was the most respected man among men. And if you were called by the rabbi, he believed that you were good enough, that you would be able to become like your teacher. 
In other words, the rabbi, when he called Simon and Andrew and James and John and all the other disciples, he thought that they were good enough to make the cut. And the interesting thing is, because they were apprenticing with their fathers, they weren't sitting under a rabbi. They weren't considered to be the best of the best of the best. They weren't good enough to make the cut. They were the not good enoughs. So when Jesus came along and looked their way, this well-respected rabbi, they were immediately ready to leave everything because Jesus thinks I'm good enough. And they took off. And they followed closely. Fast forward a year or two, perhaps. The disciples are on the Sea of Galilee in their boat, and they're having a terrible time. The storm around them is raging. Their boat is just about ready to go under. They're doing everything they can to stay afloat. When they look out in the distance and their panic turns to horror when they see a ghost. That's what they think. They see this apparition walking on the water towards them. It was bad enough that they were going to drown and now a ghostly presence. But Peter keeps focused on this image and he recognizes something about him. And as he got closer, he saw that it was Jesus, but he wasn't completely convinced. So he said, Jesus, if it's you, bid me come to you and I will walk on the water. Why would he ask that? Because a disciple wanted to be like his rabbi. So Jesus said, come. And Peter hoisted over the boat and began to walk on the water. And then doubt set in. And Peter began to sink and he yelled out and Jesus put down his hand and he said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And he picked him up and they got back in the boat together. And as soon as they stepped in the boat, the sea became as glass. Why did Peter doubt? He didn't doubt in Jesus because Jesus wasn't sinking, right? He didn't think he was good enough to be like his disciple, to be like his master. He didn't think he made the cut, that he could hang in there with Jesus. He began to doubt that he could do as his rabbi did. And Jesus restored him and would continue to teach him. And Peter would run after him being covered in the dust of his rabbi. So you see, when Christ called those disciples, they were not anywhere close to being considered the elite. And as a matter of fact, Jesus didn't just call men, but he surrounded himself with teenagers and with women and with the outcasts, with the sinners. It wasn't like any other rabbi that had ever been seen. He was different. He was inclusive. He was including so many different kinds of people. I think that Jesus had to, on a regular basis, remind his disciples of something that I want you to consider today. Jesus probably had to tell them time and time and time again, look, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I believe in you. You didn't think you were good enough, but I think you are. You didn't feel like you mattered much, but I think you matter a great deal. You were kind of apart from me and beyond my reach, but I think that you should be with me. I think you can be like me. It had to be the best and greatest compliment that could be given. Especially with what I like to call a ragtag fugitive fleet. If you remember Battlestar Galactica. I just aged myself, didn't I? They, they didn't have much going for them. They weren't educated. They didn't have a clue about a lot of things. But Jesus chose them. 
He believed in them. And here's what I want you to hear today. I've heard all of my life about how we should believe in God. And I think that's okay. But I want you to consider today that God believes in you. That Jesus trusts in you. When Jesus sent the disciples out after his resurrection, he said, go and what? Make disciples. He trusts us. He sees something in us. There's a purpose and a plan and we have a gift and an ability that maybe only God can see. But he believes that we can be like him. And look how it has changed the course of history over the years. Disciples making disciples, making disciples, making disciples, all the way to the 21st century, right? Wow. And we're still making disciples in all corners of the world. And the world has not been the same since, praise God, right? So here's the thing. What if we were completely sold out to be disciples of Christ? What if we really lived an authentic Christian life where we depended on Christ for all things? And our minds were focused in and our actions gave away who it was that we followed. And the dust that we accumulate were badges of honor as we serve him. As we see purpose in everything, as we see opportunity all around us, what if we actually took the time and believed that everything is being used by God to get the attention of people's hearts and minds? And we were participating with God in that. So I want you to think about this. God believes in you and he believes in me. profound thought that the creator of the universe would care enough about us to choose us. Young or old, able or not able, health concerns or perfect health, education or no education, poor or rich, male or female, different colors, different status. Doesn't matter. God does the choosing. He asks us to respond. So my hope and my prayer is this. I hope that you believe in God. But even more, I hope that you come to see that God believes in you. Enough to send Jesus Christ for the salvation of souls and for the work of the kingdom. I ask you, is there anything greater than that? It's the very reason that I pastor. It's the very reason that I'm a Christian. Because I believe and I trust Him with all my heart and my soul. And would do anything that he asked me to do even if I thought I couldn't do it because he knows and because of him I am able and because of Christ you are able because you've been called we can change the world amen church let's pray Lord as we see the dust rise as we follow you. May we be covered in the dust of our rabbi. May we be just like him in thought, in deed, in practice, in compassion and love. Use us the way that you see fit. And remind us that Not only do you lead us, you walk beside us. You've said that you'll never leave us, that you'll never forsake us. So Lord, I pray that we know Christ personally and that we're willing to go wherever he leads us. Help us to be faithful to follow. And it's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is appropriate for this occasion, and I invite you to...
pray right where you are, or if you would like to come to the altar to praise God or to pray, it is always open for you. Let us stand and sing together as we close our worship and begin our service in the world. Receive this benediction. May you be covered in the dust of your rabbi as you go to and fro, to home, to school, to work, to play, to rest. Wherever it is that God leads you, may you be his servant. And the peace of God and the power of God be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.